first of all, so nice to see so many people here back face to face. Um, we're really pleased to be back in kind of face to face conferences. Um, a couple of familiar faces in the audience, so it's nice to see people face to face, not on Zoom as well. So um, I'm Lucy and this is Marai. Um, so thanks for coming to hear us chat today. Um, we're going to be talking to you guys about custom product pages. Just before we get started, I just wanted to have a quick show of hands. Who is testing kind of custom product pages currently or is planning on? Cool, brilliant, that's what I'd like to see. Um, so we're just going to have a quick introduction to who we are. Um, we're going to talk about custom product pages and I'm sure everybody knows, we're just going to give a quick insight into that. Um, we're going to talk about custom products pages specifically for Apple search ads, um, our approach and our strategy kind of from our initial testing. Um, and then Mariah here is going to talk about creative best practices. So feel free to ask any specific questions on creative or ASA, ASO strategy um, as well. So we're going to get started. So just quickly, as I said, I'm Lucy, so I'm head up the agency at Redbox Mobile, so um, I look after all our, tea, our client service team, all our delivery team, delivering ASO, ASA, Google strategies um, across all of our clients' apps, and I've got Mari here. Hi, nice to meet everyone, thanks for coming. So I'm the lead designer in Redbox Mobile. I deal with the creative side of the ASO operations we run. So I specialize in creating screenshots, app preview videos, and icons for our clients. I also deal with the, doing the testing roadmaps and producing those um, testing, testing assets for our clients as well. Cool. Um, and just a bit of background, some of you might know who we are. So we're Redbox Mobile, we're an app store acquisition specialist agency, um, and we also have our own proprietary Apple search ads um, algorithm, algorithmic bidding platform. Um, we kind of lead in app store optimization, Apple search ads, Google UAC. We partner with quite a few people, and a couple of you are here. Uh, we're Apple search ads partner, um, and kind of, yeah, that's kind of just a rough introduction to us. So, yeah, I'm going into a very rough introduction of custom product pages. I mean, everyone kind of already knows as we saw by the show of hands, but just that we're all on the same page for those that aren't testing yet. So what are custom product pages? It's relatively a new function that came out with iOS 15 um, that, can, that allows product owners to customize their product pages on the App Store, which is their app listing or their ads they're running on the App Store. Um, you can have up to 35 different custom product pages, um, which can be based on different strategies, which we will go into later more in detail. Um, they are accessed, accessed by um, unique URLs. Um, and then the different things you can customize in your custom product pages are the screenshots, app, pre app preview videos, and your promotional text. However, you cannot um, customize your metadata, which is a title, subtitle, or long description. And then you can track your performance through either through an MMP or the App Store Connect. Uh, so the core aim of custom product pages, as most of you know, is about improving your conversion rate from specific channels, either within the App Store or outside of the App Store. So obviously, I'm sure most of you have seen this as the, Apple, the example from Apple. So obviously, if you're looking at having a specific focused feature from your app, a specific keyword, or specifically trying to look at optimizing your App Store listing, you can, you can tailor that. We've got some more specific examples for you guys further on in the presentation. Um, the other thing we just wanted to cover is obviously custom product pages is access through a unique URL, so that opens up quite a lot of possibilities as to where you can utilize these from. The two main paid functions at the moment are obviously Apple search ads, which we're going to be going having a chat about, um, but also IronSource and a couple of other um, partners like that. We've heard rumors that kind of some of the social channels will be opening up to testing later this year, which fingers crossed um, is, going to ha is, is going to come, and obviously that's a great opportunity for things like Facebook, Snap, TikTok. Um, but there's also strategies that you can do with like influencers or outside marketing. We've seen a really good um, example from the dating app Thursday recently that handed out free donuts in a bag with a QR code on. You scan the QR code to get the donut, it installed the app on your phone, and they had like a unique landing page. So there's lots of different opportunities. We're going to be focusing on Apple search ads today, but if anyone has any questions on any of those other channels, just let us know. Um, so before we go into the more in-depth um, strategies and examples with custom product pages, we just kind of wanted to outline the main differences between custom product pages and product page optimization, because we realized from our experience with our clients that there's still some things that can be mixed because they're both new functions. So starting with the objective of the different um, functions. So custom product pages are there to enhance your 
paid UI strategy via targeting keywords or like showcasing um, uh, features or events. But for product page optimization, it's actually to optimize your current um, app listing <coughs> organically via um, A-B testing on iOS. So we kind of said this before, but you can have up to 35 custom product pages with unique URLs for custom product pages. But for product page optimization, you can run one test. In that one test, you can have up to three different variables. So we say, um, you know, App Store A-B testing, but it's actually App Store A-B-C-D testing. It's just easier to say A-B testing. Um, you can run multiple CPPs at the same time, which is a you know, benefit of CPPs. Um, unfortunately, for custom um, product page optimization, you can only run one test at a time for now. You can add different localized um, screenshots within the same test as well, but you can only have one test. And when it comes to the variable elements you can test in custom product pages, as we said, screenshots, preview videos, and promotional text. The first two goals for product page optimization as well, so screenshots and app preview videos. But the only difference here is that you can't really do promotional text with um, product page optimization, you can do icon testing as well. So I think the main thing we want to talk about how custom product pages are going to change the face of kind of the Apple search ads landscape. So historically, for anyone who runs Apple search ads, you would do any of your keyword bidding, so brand, competitor, generic, and you'd be sending them all to the same page. Um, the same screenshots would be seen within the um, search results um, and obviously then onto the App Store listing. The only difference is if you're running creative sets testing where you had limitations of only being able to use the screens that were within your kind of upload, the 10 screens that you've uploaded to your um, App Store listing. Um, and obviously, you couldn't do things without distorting um, the actual view on like horizontal versus uh, landscape versus portrait testing and things like that. The future is going to kind of like open up um, much more where we can do specific testing. We've got some examples here um, for the times where, for example, we've had specific keyword types that we've then tailored the screenshots to, so breaking news, crossword and puzzles, um, and politics. So how can having specific key uh, screenshots like that really open up your opportunities Apple search ads and look at improving the conversion rate of those generic keywords? Some of the key benefits, um, I'm just going to quickly run through, but the main thing, which we're kind of going into a little bit more deta detail on, is improved relevance for your Apple search ads. You have unique analytics, so obviously you can be looking at testing different screenshots for different keywords or different channels and seeing how that performs, and you can actually test that all the way through um, through your App Store Connect, your Apple search ads, and obviously MMPs, if you're with likes of Apps Fire and Adjust, you can have obviously those unique tracking links that give you insight into actually not just kind of what happens on the front end, but what's happening in the back end. Quicker submission process, so historically one of the reasons we found clients didn't do too much creative sets testing is you had to push an update live to get your screenshots approved. Now you can obviously push um, the screenshots for your custom product pages separately in your App Store Connect, um, which means you don't need to push them through the submission. I will just touch on this a little bit later on. We've seen really varied times with getting them signed off. So if you're looking at like event-based custom product pages, plan well in advance because some people are seeing long delays with getting approved. Some people are getting approved straight away. So I think if you've got a big event coming up, do some testing beforehand on getting something live before that event, because what you don't want to do is get within a couple of days of the event. You want to test specific screenshots, and actually, they don't get approved, and they don't get pushed live. And obviously, the final thing is we're finally getting specific conversion rate optimized and testing for Apple search ads, um, where we can test specific screenshots and what the impact of that is. So I wanted to go into a little bit more detail about how we think custom product pages is going to benefit your Apple search ad strategy. So the number one issue that we speak to clients about is scalability. And I think that's a general thing within the market is how do I scale my Apple search ads? Apple search ads is at the bottom of the acquisition funnel. It's a really high intent channel. Um, and clients see really strong performance. I'm sure you guys see really good revenue, event data, all of that coming from your Apple search ads. So the number one question is, how do we scale Apple search ads? 
There's two ways we've kind of always approached it. The first one is expand your keywords, but obviously not all keywords convert for you and you don't want to be wasting money on keywords that don't convert. The second thing is getting more impressions on the keywords that do work for you. Now, if you're maxing out your brand, you're really obviously only moving into the competitor and generic space. And with 60, 70%, probably more actually, of searches within the app stores being on a branded term, you're really having to look at how you optimize your competitor buying through Apple search ads and scaling through that. So number, one of the number one ways to do that is improve your relevance on a keyword. And the key thing to do that is to look at your tap through rate and your conversion rate on that keyword. So if we link this back into custom product pages, custom product pages allow us to test screenshots that are going to help improve your tap through rate. Um, we're talking anything from like a 0.5 to 1% increase is going to have a benefit for you. So if we're utilizing custom product pages to have bespoke screenshots for specific keywords within the app store, and we're able to incrementally improve that tap through rate on that keyword, what we would hope and what we're trying to test out at the moment is through improving the tap through rate, are we able to improve our relevancy on that keyword? Through improving the relevancy, are we able to then subsequently get a little bit more share of voice or a few more impressions? Can we move up a bracket of share of voice from 10 to 20, 20 to 30, and try and gain on some of that competitive traction? Um, if you're improving your tap through rate and you're gaining on those types of things, you should see things like cost per tap and cost per acquisition start to drop down as well. This isn't going to happen overnight. This is like a a longer scale kind of pro um, testing project. But the idea is behind understanding the impact of custom product pages and how it then obviously goes on to scale that. So the key things I think um, is good to understand when you're looking at Apple search ad strategy for custom product pages is how can I improve the tap through rate of the users when they see my ad? How can I get them through into my app store listing and then obviously get them to install? If you're then seeing improvements in that, what we're hoping to see and what we're testing at the moment is you do see these other steps coming on and then you keep repeating that process and keep growing on that relevancy within, within the app store. We've talked a lot about ASA here, and I'm sure you're going to hear it a lot today about ASO and ASA. We've been saying it for a long time. These are two sides of the same coin. And what we mean is your strategy should be aligned on Apple search ads and ASO. If you're working at a company where it's two separate teams, moving forward into 2022, you need to be looking at how you bring those two things together. And the reason we say this is because they benefit each other. And you could push in all sorts of other channels here. Anything that drives installs or drives users to your app store is going to benefit your ASO strategy. And the reason we say this is because Apple search ads is the top ad space. Realistically, if we're being honest about users, most of the time they're going to go with the Apple search ad space. So if you're driving, at your, running your Apple search ads um, and you're driving more downloads, for example, what we're hoping to see is actually as you increase the number of installs across your app, but also kind of across your generics and competitors, what's the impact on your organic? So are your keyword rankings improving? Is your category ranking improving? Is your overall holistic view of app store optimization organic improving? If you are then seeing things like your rankings improve, your category ranking, your overall visibility improve within the App Store, that is then going to help you on your Apple search ads through your generic strategy. It's, if you want to scale in Apple search ads, you need to go back and look at what your positioning is on organics. And the same, if you want to scale your organic visibility, you need to use your Apple search ads data to underpin your strategy, understand the keywords that you're buying, understand conversion rate at keyword level. And this is where custom product pages is going to come in. And conversion rate optimization really does underpin all of this. So this is what we've kind of been waiting for. So we've always said ASO and ASA are kind of two points that are very closely related. Custom product pages is the bridge that's bringing those two channels together. Um, so as I showed before, if you want to improve your ASO, first look at your ASA strategy. And if you want to scale your ASO, look at ASA, look at your ASO strategy. And custom product pages is bringing kind of that introduction um, forward with kind of how we do that. So I'm just going to hand over to Mariah now. He's going to have a quick chat about kind of the sort of strategies that you should be looking to kind of get started with on custom product pages. Thank you. So our approach to custom product pages, we kind of developed this like three tiered system. Um, it all also varies on what product you're working on, what type of app you're working on, and your resource as well. But to start with, we have the basic one. So you would only have one custom product page. Um, that would be based on either an event or a keyword, depending on the product, as I said. Moving on to the moderate one, building onto that, 
um, two to three different custom product pages, specifically all um, based on different things. So one can be based on an event, another one can be based on an offer or promotion, another one can be based on a keyword. Moving on to the advanced one, um, which requires a lot of resource, um, but if you can run as many as custom product pages as you can, uh, with different strategies, for example, you can target new users, you can target returning, brand keywords generic, you know, as we said, promotions, offers, uh, you can showcase different functionality as well for different types of audiences, and now you can also localize, and that would be a very advanced approach to... Yeah. And don't forget, you have 35 testing options. Yeah. Um, at the moment, with the limited number of resources that you can use, you can use those to test different keywords and different strategies across your Apple search ads. Um, if you have a high number, if you are also a web-based business and you have a high volume of traffic to your web-based business on mobile web, you can look at implementing specific banners that take users to specific URLs as well. So don't forget to think about how to best utilize the maximum number of testing opportunities you've got. Um, the reason we kind of look at these three kind of um, phases is because it comes down to resource and this is new. It's probably resource that's not been accounted for in Teams. So there is big um, opportunity for building these out and if you just want to get started just look at how you can do some event-based CPPs or some keyword-based CPPs. Um, we've kind of alluded to a couple of these and I'm sure most people know these but we just thought we'd call out a couple of the specific segments in which you could look at testing. Um, so contextual targeting for gaming apps you can look at being specific about where users hit your app and where users maybe drop out of your app. How do you improve that through the screenshots when they're actually seeing your ad especially through the, the uh, platforms like Iron Source and things like that, but also understanding like a hyper casual gamer versus other types of gamers. What type of screenshots, what do they want to see within your app and how does that, how can we test that out? Retargeting, so another way of scaling your Apple search ads is looking at your returning users. So different markets have different percentages of returning, new versus returning users. And with Apple search ads, it's something not to kind of um, neglect and to look at how you can actually make it um, optimize it for its best performance and actually if you're retargeting new users or targeting returning users in Apple search ads what screenshots do they want to see do they want to see offers do they want to see specific features that are new to the app that might encourage them to come back in and one of the main things I think is going to be really really important is if you are a multi geo app look at your localization strategy both through ASO but both through ASA you can look at testing different language bases. If you're testing in countries, say for example UAE, where you have Arabic and English as core language, which language performs the best? Utilize those 35 custom product pages to test those sorts of things. Different markets perform in different ways and not everyone wants to see your app in the same way and will respond to your app in the same way. So that's how you can utilize that to test how different markets might convert. Uh, with regards to that one, I would start by looking at your average tap through rates by territories and then prioritize how you can incrementally improve the low tap through rate territories by doing some screenshot testing. We've got some examples of this, like promotion and offer, how you can kind of pull that in, and then obviously the specific keyword type um, key that we've kind of generally talked about. Yeah, so we're now starting to go into more of our um, real life experiences with our clients. So one of the ones we worked on was a keyword like targeted CPPs for our clients Avatrade, their trading app. So we took this approach with three different um, keywords we can focus on uh, because there are different types of trading users. You know, someone who's into crypto, necessarily if they were to see Usain Bolt and just the best Forex trading app, they might not be as you know, tempted to download. But if we implement like CPPs that are for example, based on the crypto, and then that shows that messaging just with the first, within a couple, couple of first screenshots, that can potentially make them, you know, um, install it. Same goes for, we also done one for Forex. We also done another one if someone were to search, let's say, best trading app. So we also used not only by just messaging, but we also creative assets such as putting award um, badges there or the, um, like different uh, backgrounds that would potentially um, appeal to different types of users. 
Yeah, and yeah. testing if your same fault works, being on your screenshots or not as well, <laughs> is one thing we're testing. Um, but there's other things you can do with this, which again, it bleeds a little bit into the product page optimization. So that's where understanding how you utilize both in a really clear testing matrix is going to be really important. So testing a light background versus a dark, dark background. Look at your user base. Is your user base using light mode or dark mode? Should you test putting them in your screenshots versus putting light mode, for example? Social proofing is a really good one. You, you would think it works, but it doesn't work for everybody because not everybody's looking for that. Um, so I think it's a really good way of how, how can you utilize your keywords. If you're in a highly competitive Apple search ads field, gambling, finance, gaming, it's really important to understand on your keyword level how you can perform and improve um, your scalability there all the way through to post install event. And this is where looking at tailoring, if for example, you're buying Forex or crypto, tailoring those screenshots to those user sees because they might be completely different users for you and not be interested in the other products. So, it's a really good way of pre-qualifying users so you have less churn once they've actually installed and actually that obviously helps improve your install to registration or install to purchase rate. Um, another example we've got here is for an app that has multiple, um, I guess, audiences for one app. So for example, um, Global Player's goal is to grow the Global Player within the UK market. Um, you might be aware of all of the big radio brands, Heart, LBC, Capital FM. Um, so the strategy here for us was how can we utilize the screenshots to target the specific audience? So for example, on the branded term, Global Player, you have all of their brands being highlighted. Um, it's very small, kind of all crammed in. So utilizing kind of specific keyword searches based on their audiences who are completely different from each other. We've highlighted potentially does actually highlighting the key radio presenters um, or the key functions podcast within the app. How does that help um, actually improve the conversion rate or kind of on those com those competitor keywords? Um, and because the biggest issue is getting the user in and actually getting them to the relevant radio station and understanding that that product houses everything. But obviously different audiences might want a different product within that one single app. Another example here we have is promotions. So this links into events as well. So I will talk a little bit about that. So for example, a lot of shopping brands and FMCG brands tend to ignore their, their screenshots because they have a lot of brand traction. Um, and actually, one thing to look at here is actually how can you improve your post install event? How can you install the retention? Shopping apps have a high install to download rate because you keep them on your phone for when you need them and then you uninstall them. So how can you utilize potentially offers or Black Friday, big events like that within your screenshots? And does that actually help improve the conversion rate of the users once they download the app and the retention of them? Another example of this was in the, within the gambling and gaming sector. Over in the US, we've just had the Super Bowl and March Madness, super, super competitive, but kind of really niche events. How can you show users that you have specific um, actions to be taken out there? Um, how can you help users understand that Cheltenham's coming um, and things like that? And the same goes for casino products. So how can you best put the right game in front of the right audience? Returning users is really big market for casino. So if you know from your back end data that most people that that return to your app actually go and play a specific game. Can we put that game in the screenshots and see if that helps pull them in from kind of wider generic keywords? I'm just top line going to talk about reporting here as well. Um, it's still not as kind of sophisticated as we liked, but obviously this is a brand new product. Um, but the key areas you should be looking at is your tap through rate through Apple search ads. How are you incrementally improving that? Your conversion rate overall through your App Store Connect and through things like um, your localizations, if you're doing specific localization testing, your retention rate, and your post install event data. Um, so we kind of like prepared this checklist for us when we're approaching custom product pages for our clients. So from um, beginning to end, we can like check these one by one so we know where we are and what we need to focus on. So we start with defining the objectives for the test and then move on to outlining the hypothesis. Um, we need to understand their tar our target audience and once we have all those background information, we can then start developing some creative concepts. And when we start pinning down those creative concepts, we can think about you know, laying out the testing matrix as the different ones. And then we also need to, which is very important, to define benchmarks and what success is 
for custom product pages. And um, what we're trying to say here is actually put some a little bit of thought into your tests because I think if you're just going and rushing to get custom product pages live because they're a new shiny thing, I think you're probably not going to see any kind of statistically significant results, for example. Think about actually the size of the audience that you have through Apple search ads and work out if you're actually going to get any specific data from it. Um, and I think if you're outlining your objectives, and then understanding what you need to, what success is going to look like, it will help define your strategy and the specific things that you're going to be testing. Um, so we're just going to move on to now. Mariah's going to talk a little bit about kind of best practice when it comes to design in the App Store. Um, so just let us know if you have any specific design questions as well. Yeah, thank you again. Um, so uh, before I go into the different um, parts that make up the screenshot, I just want to say that. Um, you know, all the, these things that I'm going to just talk about, they're not just for one type of creative. They can be applied to your um, PPOs for testing and for your learnings from PPO, you can take those into CPPs as well. So kind of like ties in with like how they're all interlinked. Um, so going into the specific components that make up a screenshot, I mean, this is how we approach it. It's not, you know, you can also approach it in your own ways with your own team, but we kind of look at, first of all, the graphical assets that make up a screenshot. So those can be the 2D or 3D um, elements you can put in there. Icons can be a way or illustrations. Um, these are really, you know, um, important to like communicate your branding and who you are as a brand because you want to tell your story through your product page as well. And if you just have very plain or like not really eye catching things, that really doesn't make you stand out from the rest of the competition. So um, moving on to titles, you know, it can be just call to actions or, you know, benefit based or feature based copy you have or any type of titles. Um, what's very important is that they need to be visual enough so it catches the eye. Maybe you want to say a lot because you're like very proud and like, you know, this is the greatest future we have. But if you have like literally the smallest writing in like 15 lines in the small like display we have on the phones, no one's going to be able to see that on the search results because no one actually like takes the time to expand one by one each like screenshots for different competitors and everything. So keep it as um, short and concise as possible. If you want to write something longer, perhaps the one strategy you can approach that is you can think about the main part. So you can either like use a different color for that or like some highlighting strategies for the parts you want to like um, enhance. For moving on to colors and backgrounds, um, this kind of ties in with what Lucy briefly mentioned as well. So it's very important to see like the genre when you're working in the genre of app, what genre of app, you need to look at your competitors. And you don't want to be obviously, you know, um, copying or anything, but you need to make sure that you're like within the same genre. It's good to stand out, but maybe there's a reason why people are doing something in a certain way as well. But you have to make sure that all these strategies are within your branding guidelines as well. So some brands might have a stricter ones, some brands might have more creative freedom. But you know, perhaps like creating some sort of contrast, like light on dark, or vice versa, can be very beneficial as well. And these can be also tested. So all these different elements are great to test to um, increase your conversion. Looking at layouts. Um, you know, it's like, as I said, we're trying to like tell a story of our product and for our brand. So it's good to like, you know, uh, know what are the like main things you want to tell your customer. So you can put those within the first couple of screenshots um, because we need to like find the most optimized way to tell your story the best for potential users. Um, where the phones and the CTA are um, like located are quite important as well. Um, because you can test out different like flows, you can create different ones. So you can use, for example, a panoramic phone, so if that works for you, or you can use, you know, like one up, one down, or like a domino, like different types of things, and then see what works for your brand and for the specific genre you're working in. In-app visuals um, can be perhaps the most important thing because that's the actual product um, you're trying to showcase. There are different ways to showcase your in-app visuals in a visually engaging way, in a strat strategically beneficial way for you as well. So maybe think about more ways instead of just having phones and just um, device frames. Perhaps you can like highlight certain bits that would tie the story with your copy, or you can just have standalone UI. You know that might work better for your branding. So 
you know, just have to think about, I think, you know, do your competitor research. This is something we always do, competitor analysis. It's always good to stay on um, track with the current like industry trends. So staying up to date and knowing the like general creative climate uh, on App Store and then taking those into consideration of how you can approach your screenshots. And also it's important to, you know, keep on testing and also keep on updating. Yeah, I think the key thing that we talk to clients about, whether they have creative in-house or creative with us, it's about strategic storytelling for your app screens. Don't neglect them. Mm -hmm. Historically, ASO has been probably 80% about changing keywords, um, testing metadata, doing this, and a little bit of uh, screenshot testing. I think in the next year, what we're going to see is this flip on its head, and actually we're going to be talking probably 80 90% about screenshots and screenshots from the App Store. Phones have got bigger, UIs have changed, in-app experience is better than mobile web, so more and more users are moving to app first as well. So I think utilize, you, screenshots are such an underutilized part of people's marketing kind of strategies for the app. Make sure it aligns with your offline strategy and custom product pages have come at right a really good time with regards to this because what you can start doing, I think Apple realized that actually people are sending traffic to the app store and they need to be able to improve that. Um, that journey from the user landing there and coming through. It benefits them to have a better conversion rate because they get more people into your app and they make more money. So <laughs> realistically, that's what it comes down to. Um, I think finally, we just wanted to cover off what the future looks like. This is going to be something you need to be looking at prioritizing into your app store acquisition strategy. Um, for us, the benefits here, it's more testing opportunity to help your brand grow. It's going to help your Apple search ads in improving your relevance and your conversion, which we hope will help scale. Um, you can push screenshots live without an app update, which helps apps that either don't have dev resource or regular updates. Um, and it allows us flexible testing within the screenshots. Before, we were limited to the 10 screenshots we had, and we couldn't test out of order. Finally, we have conversion rate optimizer testing, and obviously I think this is just going to grow and grow and grow. Um, and also you can be bespoke with the different audiences and keywords. And I think realistically, this is a new product. We don't 100% know what results are at the moment. As the iOS 15 user base grows, and obviously that's really important that you, you could only do this if your users are on iOS 15. As that iOS 15 user base grows, so does kind of the quality of the data and the amount of data that's available. So I think it's important for us to actually address the weaknesses in terms of what potentially could come. I said this earlier, we've seen really mixed approval times between different app sectors as well and different um, categories within the app. So bear that in mind within your testing. You should know within the few, first few that you put live whether you're going to kind of get them through in 24 hours, 48 or 7 days, however long it is. But it's definitely something to put into your testing matrix, that upload and approval process. Submission we found with a few apps, not all, is that actually if you have an app open for submission and you're pushing it live, your custom product pages and your product page optimization in some cases will not get approved until the app update goes through. So if you have a dev schedule, have that built into your testing matrix because if your devs are pushing something live and actually you've got a major event coming up, you need to have already preloaded kind of your testing for custom product page or product page optimization uh, because there might be a chance it might not get approved. Creative resource, this is the number one thing we're coming up against is apps don't have creative resource to suddenly build 35 testing options out, two weeks later, change them and provide different options. So be organized with your resource. If you need to look at how you get resource in, do that, but don't let re a lack of resource be the reason you don't test because you will fall behind your competitors. The management, and this links into it, the management of numerous tests for the App Store with Apple is a relatively new thing. So how are you actually managing your 35 different tests, even just through Apple search ads, but if it's other channels as well? How are you making sure that you are getting statistical significance res results, you're able to review results, and obviously then implement new tests? And the final thing is actually we're seeing statistical significant results aren't actually coming out very quickly at the moment, more so product page optimization, and again, this way you have to link it back to the amount of traffic that you are sending users through. You're going to be getting the most traffic from your brand potentially, but your brand conversion rate is only going to fluctuate a very little bit. The, the benefit here is how do you grow the generics and the competitors through Apple search ads. 
So kind of we just wanted to open up the floor to any questions you have on custom product pages. I was 15, ASO, Creative, Apple Search Ads or anything. So yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah, so you mentioned about like the kind of like promotion, so rough um, and like the screenshots of that. So roughly what would be the best practice like like and the amount of minimal amount of time you would need to run those promotions as of about Black Friday, but then for example like if it takes a while to get the data, how yeah. would you say it's like the best practice minimal? I'll, I'll be completely transparent. I think if you're running event data, you're not going to see tap through rate click-through rate updates that you kind of over a longer period of time, what you'll be looking for, that's where I would say when you're planning out your tests, look at what your end goal is, what does success look like for you? Okay, so look back at last year's event, if it's a kind of yearly, yearly event, what was the retention rate of those users? What was the conversion rate to the in-app event that you're looking to target? How can you incrementally improve that and have a look at that over that time period? Um, because the long-term tap-through rate benefits are going to come from keyword-based targeting, I think. So um, where you are being bespoke with your screenshots for specific keywords. Doesn't mean you shouldn't do event-based because actually, let's use a sports betting example. We have the Grand National coming up. If they're seeing the Grand National and horse racing type screenshots in the app, actually, it means that they know that they're going to get that product when they get through rather than kind of football focused screenshots or basketball focused screenshots. So with events, it's not something to be dismissed, but I don't think you're going to get kind of those statistically significant results. But that's where I think broaden out what success looks like for you within that testing matrix. Um, and actually, you're trying to make it relevant. And remember, contextual targeting is so, so important to users coming through. What's your experience with the videos on the website? So that's something we're just about to kick off starting. I'd have loved to have had some video results in here. Um, and obviously, Apple Search Ads um, prioritizes video over uh, static images. So we've been roughly testing that for a while, actually, because it's naturally being tested with our, within Apple Search Ads. But what we're kind of hoping to look at testing is actually uh, landscape versus portrait videos and what that looks like. Um, I think it will help us understand actually the point of having a video in the App Store and having an app preview video. We've always assumed that it's good to have, but it doesn't always convert. And we've never, because you can't see that post install kind of data on which creatives are performing, it's going to help us to decide actually, do we need App Store preview videos? But I think don't forget that Apple Search Ads prioritizes videos if you've got it in your set over your static images. So if you have video in there, it will put that in the first position on your Apple search ads. So it's something to take into consideration when running those tests as well. Um, but 100% it's a test to stick in there. If you have a video, obviously videos are quite a lot to build. But sorry, just last thing on videos we've talked about is apps that just screen record their videos and then upload those and apps that make a feature video. So it's more of kind of like an animated experience of the app rather than just a screen record. That's definitely a good test that we're like hopefully going to implement in the next couple of weeks. Cool. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned you've seen different uh, uplifts in conversion for brand keywords versus generic and yeah. uh, competitors. Do you have like a sort of an order of magnitude of the uplift that you can expect basically? Yeah, so I can only talk from my experience, but in I would say 90% of 99% of cases your brand will have the strongest tap through rates. Um, and actually an important thing to remember with Apple search ads is tap through rate is done at app level. Mm -hmm. So actually if you've got quite a few keywords that are pulling your tap through route tap through rate down on the generics um, and averaging it out lower based on that. That's where I would kind of say brand, you'd probably, from we've not seen too much on the brand, but brand gets the majority of traffic coming through. So that's something to consider. But realistically, most people are getting 70, 80% tap through rate on their brand, even higher. And like, uh, what do you find in terms of expectations on how much you can improve it relative to the baseline? Ah, okay, so what you mean? So I would say like any uplift is gonna be good, but what you'd be looking for is Eight, as anything as low as like 0.2, 0.3% increase. Work out what that it, that percentage increase looks like as downloads because um, what you're looking to do is increase the number of downloads from those users tapping through on your ads. But I would be saying if you're getting 0.51% through your initial testing, that's a good place to start. You're not going to be 
you might do, but I don't think people are going to be seeing like 40, 50% increases in their tap-through rate from their initial testing. What you want to be doing is regular testing, incremental testing, and building on each of those learnings. We always say this with ASO. ASO in general isn't like a one-time thing. It's not like change your metadata, change your screenshots. You need to change it and continually change it and continually learn. And then when you look back, actually, that growth trajectory has grown over time. But that doesn't happen just like that. It does in some cases, but most cases it doesn't. And, but did you find that, let's say, the uplift you can expect differs from brand keywords to generic and compatibles? Like it's easier to get gains on some of these? Yeah, potentially, the yeah, potentially. Um, I would be focusing on your competitor keywords to start with. Um, and that's based on user behavior of search behavior within the App Store. And I think if you're seeing, say you're targeting at one specific competitor, the first place I would go is look at the tap-through rate that I currently have. I'd then go and look at my share of voice on that keyword and my rough spend on that keyword. And then I'd be looking at my keyword ranking organically. That would be my benchmarks. And then I'd be applying the testing format to that and then looking at what those each of those things is increasing. The share of voice thing isn't going to happen overnight. That's probably a longer trajectory thing. But that's where it's important to keep looking back at your initial tests to see how that has grown. Um, any further questions? Yeah, that's <laughs> <It's> right. <laughs> in terms instead of uh, creatives, did you find uh, any part of the creative, let's say, is higher leverage in terms of uh, impact on the top to eight? Because now that you can maybe start doing uh, yeah. maybe testing, I guess, you can try to abstract a bit and try to understand if title has most of the impact to increase the It varies the from sector to sector, I'd say, but I think the generalized thing is like social proofing. Um, if you have social proofing, if it's that relevant, if it's relevant to your app, um, but that's what we're hoping to test with these CPPs because before we couldn't test those unless you ran like a specific creative sets test, you couldn't test that. So that's what, um, like in our stages, those are the quite granular level tests that you can do once you've done those wider level testings. Like, does having um, forex in big letters on the first screen work better than having it at the bottom of the screen in small letters and those sort of kind of incremental tests. Cool. Um, cool. So we have reached the end of our session today. Thank you, everybody. Really appreciate you coming. Um, Mariah and I will be here for a couple of minutes. So if you want to grab us, um, do let us know. But feel free to reach out to us separately if you want to have a chat about anything or you have specific questions. We're more than happy. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you.